How's it going Star Seekers? My name's Luke and welcome back to the channel where today we're going to be taking a look at a game called Shing. It's a beat em up where you and up to three other players take the roles of one of four uniquely skilled ninjas and get to slice and dice your way through hordes of yokai as you venture through forgotten lands on your mission to recover a stolen relic. Now Shing originally released last year but was ported to Switch in January by the team over at Pixel Heart. It's currently available for $17.99 on the UK eShop and $19.99 on the US eShop, but Pixel Heart are also due to release a limited edition physical version of the game very soon, and I thought I'd give the game a go and let you know my thoughts and opinions on it. So prepare to unsheath those katana, sharpen those kunai, and let's get started. So upon starting the game, Shin kicks things off with a pretty awesome animated cutscene which introduces us to our four heroes and the demonic yokai that we'll have to face throughout the game. Following this, we then have to play through a little tutorial level called the Watchtower and this introduces us to the game's control scheme which comes in two different forms. The first of these control schemes has your kind of standard beat em up key bindings where you perform attacks and jumps with the face buttons and the second is a more unique control scheme where instead you perform the different moves using your right thumbstick. You're able to perform various combos by mixing and matching your different attacks or moving your right thumbstick in different ways and combat is generally pretty fluid allowing you to urge juggle enemies and perform a special attack once you've gained enough momentum. On the defensive side of things you're able to dodge attacks by tapping the R button plus a direction and you can also block attacks by holding L or down on the right thumbstick with perfectly timed blocks allowing you to deflect incoming projectiles which is something you're going to be doing a lot in the game. In all honesty, while the combat system does have a decent amount of depth to it, I personally found myself just button mashing most of the time and I didn't really get into performing any complex combos aside from the odd ur juggle. Now the story of Shing follows the journey of four highly trained, albeit incredibly irresponsible ninjas. After discovering a relic called the Starseed has been stolen, for which they were responsible for protecting, they then have to set off in pursuit of the thieves and have to fight through an army of yokai to try and retrieve it. While it's all rather cliche, the game's story isn't too bad. All of the cutscenes are fully voice acted so you don't need to read a load of text and we get to see a good amount of interaction between the different characters which builds on the unique personalities. One thing that I did find a little unusual though was the fact that the script for the game does feature some rather adult themes while the gameplay feels like it's aimed at a younger audience despite it containing a little bit of animated blood and gore. So the levels in Shing are accessed from a map screen and can be played at four different difficulties, each of which rewards you with tokens to unlock new costumes for your characters. Levels themselves are all pretty linear and they feature the standard beat em up formula which sees you encountering waves of enemies as you make your way through levels which you must then defeat before you can move onwards. Enemies come in both ranged and melee forms each with their own unique move sets and attack patterns and you often have to utilise your block ability to perform counter attacks or deflect projectiles or quickly dodge out of the way of unblockable attacks and counter with your own. Now in addition to your standard attacks, upon defeating enemies you can also gain power charges which affect your character in different ways. You have green ones which recover a bit of your health, purple ones which provide you with a shield and yellow ones which cause you to drop explosive mines when you perform a dodge and there are also several other colours which buff your attacks in different ways. I thought these charges were a pretty neat addition and added a bit more variety to combat but you do tend to use through them pretty quickly and I would have liked to have seen them last a little longer. Now overall enemy variety in Shing is pretty decent with a couple of new enemies introduced in each level though you do encounter the same types of enemy across the majority of the game and a few of them really didn't feel like they fit into the environments of some levels. 
As you work through the game, you'll also come up against a variety of tougher bosses and sub-bosses who have a large health bar at the bottom of the screen, and these fights usually feature unique mechanics which often involve the environment, like here where you have to use your sword to blind this giant so that he'll accidentally eat the wrong minions, or this fight where you need to destroy the mushrooms to stop the boss from buffing himself. Now I played the game in single player mode, and despite me only playing on easy mode, at times I felt pretty overwhelmed, especially with certain enemy combinations. You're able to switch between characters on the fly, and if you die you can continue with another character, but combat can still be pretty tough if you don't regularly dodge and block, and this leads me on to my first minor criticism of Shing. While the game is still enjoyable when playing solo, it really does feel like a game that was meant to be played with multiple players. I found combat did become a little tiresome playing on my own as each encounter lasted around 5 minutes, and I think that playing with others would really speed up the pace of the game and keep it feeling fresh. Now aside from working your way through the main campaign, there are also a couple of additional gameplay features which provide a welcome break from the general side-scrolling beat'em up sections. Firstly, you have these side areas where you get to select from a number of different dialogue options and have the heroes discuss different topics which frequently have amusing outcomes. And secondly, there are the challenge encounters where you have to complete a specific objective. Like here I had to perform a 10 hit er combo before all of the enemies were defeated. Completing these side areas also rewards you with extra tokens to unlock new costumes, and I quite enjoyed engaging in them whenever I got the chance. So moving finally onto the audio and visual side of things, graphically I thought Shing didn't look too bad. The environments of areas are all unique and have some nice detail into them, and the character models are all pretty well done, though the texture resolution of both the characters and environments isn't the highest quality, and things can look a little blurry and flat at times. From what I've heard, the game did have some major issues with its frame rates on release, but after playing the game, it seems like these may have been resolved to some extent, though I did still experience some minor frame rate dips every so often. Now when it comes to audio, Shing actually sounds pretty good. We get some nice sound effects in combat, the game's voiceover acting is all well done, and the game's music is also pretty decent, having some oriental vibes to its soundtrack which fit nicely with the gameplay. In all, I found Shing to be an enjoyable experience, though I do think that it's a game that is best enjoyed with friends. It has a playtime of around 4-6 to six hours depending on the difficulty you select, and there are plenty of unlockable costumes which does encourage repeat playthroughs of challenge levels or the main game on higher difficulties. Now when it comes to my own personal rating of the game, I'm going to be giving Shing 3 out of 5 stars. Shing offers some classic beat'em up action which feels a little more modern thanks to an interesting combat system. Its 4 player co-op sets it aside in a genre which is usually limited to only 2 players, and if you've got a bunch of friends around and are looking for some simple beat'em up action, then Shing might just fit the bill. And that's about it for this review of Shing on the Nintendo Switch. Don't forget to hit that like button if it helped you out, let me know your thoughts and opinions on the game in the comments section below, and consider subscribing to the channel as I upload new Switch related content and reviews every few days. For now though, I want to thank you all once again for watching, and until next time, take care of yourselves, and game on.